Uh, hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is this is a boff. Um, so that's why I'm turned around facing you lot. I'm expecting. I'm not expected to do all the work here. Um, so this is about uh, CI auto package test, uh, CI.debian.net, other kinds of related things. Um, there's a Gobi document. Thank you, Andreas, for the fixing my URL. Uh, that's on IRC, I think. Possibly we have some people watching via live stream. Uh, I can't remember whether that's going to be Antonio or Paul or both of them. Um, I guess we'll find out on IRC if they write back. Um, so if somebody, could I have a volunteer to like watch IRC to check if anything comes from IRC that we should say? No, nobody wants to do that. Okay, well I will try to do you can do that, Andreas, thank you. Um, so I'll just do a quick intro. Um, I'm not involved, really, with ci.debian.net. I wrote auto package test a very long time ago. It was over a decade ago when I was working for Canonical. Um, and um, it's very nice to see that code finally <laughs> deployed for its intended use in Debian. Um, it, for my own work in Debian, I have found it a massive improvement. Um, I, I can now um, throw my package, which has a fairly good test suite, at least the ones that do, at the CI, and uh, now I don't have to like do a lot of manual checking, and, and the automation will do all the right things. My testing migration is generally much faster. Um, I've had at least one serious data loss regression um, spotted before it migrated to testing, and then I was able to work with the maintainer of my dependency to resolve that with an appropriate breaks field. Um, and, well, that interaction went relatively well as well. Uh, I didn't have a big, yeah, it was, there was a little amount of friction, but it was not too bad. Um, the thing is still very new. Um, I've experienced, because I'm, I'm quite an exciting user, um, I have a tendency to explore edge cases and everything. Um, I've discovered a number of edge cases. I don't think I need to go through them in detail here. Um, I think probably what would be most useful in this BOF is if people were just to share their experiences and particularly uh, good parts. And also, uh, um, so I've got a couple of questions also from that Antonio suggested, which was um, if anybody tried to add auto package tests to their package and came across problems, um, we can maybe try to help resolve those or collect them as like bug reports or feature requests. Um, and if you have a situation that you came across and you were able to solve, then um, collecting that, sharing that experience with us would be probably helpful. So yes, go ahead. Right, you put your hand up, Mike, please. Hello, so uh, I think that auto package tests are great. So thanks a lot for that. I use it a lot and I try to add them to all of my packages I, and encourage my friends to use them too. However, I came across one problem and this also concerns the integration into uh, testing migration now of auto package tests. And this is um, failures of tests which are due to uh, unsatisfiable um, dependencies of the test cases, and I think that these should be test these should be uh, treated differently than tests that just fail. That is tests for which you can install all the all the dependencies and then they fail executing. And the reason for this is well, I have one one particular use case. In fact, where um, I have alternative dependencies in the package because I have a package which can cooperate with various backends. And for each of these backends, I have a test. And on any particular architecture, of course, it, it's perfectly okay that some of these backends just cannot be installed. And I don't want my test cases to fail just for this. Hello. Um, um, uh, for those tests, I just skip this architecture in the test and install the uh, dependencies in the test itself. Uh, it's not nice, but I think uh, 
it's a reasonable uh, midterm solution. Um, it, the tests are so uh, if have special dependencies on architectures, um, architecture, archi architecture dependent packages, I just install them in the test or I just skip the test and pass it in the uh, test suit. Um, so the test tests wouldn't be triggered by the upload of those particular packages, but uh, you wouldn't have to uh, change anything in the um, in the infrastructure. But uh, something uh, relying on the architecture would be nice to see. Um, I'm not sure I, I understood. Uh, the purpose is also that, of course, I do not want to code in my test, in the control file of my, of my tests, uh, which packages are available on which architecture. This should not be hard-coded in the, in the control file. But, okay, so maybe we can discuss this later because I'm not sure I understood completely. Yeah, yeah uh, I just proposed the workaround and yeah, it's fine that you are not happy with that. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, your workaround, as I understand it, you, you install the test dependency in the test script, yeah. right? And then yeah. if, the, if you cannot install the dependency, what do you, I mean, now you cannot make the test fail because, uh, be, be, because that was the whole point and you shouldn't make it pass because it is not passed. Um, you need to be able to skip it. So there's only very recently support being added for a test script itself to decide that the test has been skipped. Is that what you're using? Um, basically, yes. Uh, I can skip a package based on the architecture. Uh, so I know that it's not installable there, but I still want to uh, run the other test. So, uh, never mind, it's just a workaround. So, uh, Right, so you've encoded the thing in the, you've removed the test dependency from the control file and put an architecture restriction in instead. Right, yeah, I can see why that's not brilliant. <laughs> It's I had basically a similar idea. You can check if the package is installed, and if not, then you can also skip the test. Right, right. So I think what I'm actually implicitly suggesting, uh, accidentally, is you um, you move the dependency from the from the test depends and have it installed in the script with apt. Um, that's kind of annoying. You now need to declare needs root because you'll need to run apt. Um, and also, you need to declare the new restriction for I might return this, fa this, this skip status, and then you can return the skip status. I'm not sure that's a... This, this all feels like a... I, I would like to suggest a different alternative, um, which is that you negotiate on the list to define a new test restriction, which is which is, doesn't have this bug with test dependencies. Um, and then when auto package test is fixed so that it no longer has this bug, your test will be run and you can maybe run them manually with a, with a force option. Um, and in the meantime, at least your test won't be run and won't break. There's a comment on IRC from Elbrus. He's uh, obviously watching. You can use Skippable now. Okay, thanks a lot. Because I was taught, uh, told by Paul, uh, Paul Givers uh, that there would be a flaky uh, restriction which I used in my package. And I just dis discovered three minutes ago that it uh, didn't work. So, uh, so apparently there isn't skippable now. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Skippable. Uh, skippable defines an additional exit status for your script. I forget what it is, but you can read the docs. And then if you declare skippable, then you can exit the special exit status to mean, I know you ran me, but actually the result is skip. Okay, was that, was that the only problem anybody had with auto push tests? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I having a small issue, which is more well, not really an issue, but uh, in, I mean, I started adding some auto package tests a few years ago, as soon as it was reasonably supported in Debian. But most of my auto package tests are not, have very poor coverage and are not as extensive as I would like. Uh, so far, so good. Now that the migration to testing is affected to by 
the results of these tests, it means that my mm, very minimal tests make my package migrate faster to testing. And in some cases, I don't feel very comfortable with this. Basically, I think I would like or need something that tells me, okay, where I can express, I have this test, it's better than nothing, but please don't reduce my testing migration delay uh, just because the path. But, but you would want it increased because of a fail? Yes. Uh, right, that's a really nice suggestion. Um, have you spoken to anybody about that? I don't know what would be needed to implement that. I think that would need support in multiple places. Yeah, not at all. I just noticed this last week, basically, where I was like, mm, actually, this upload, I would like it to stay a little bit longer in, in seed. And I tried setting urgency to low, and that was not enough, because it seems to be overridden by the release team magic somewhere. Uh, yes. Um, for now, you could put a restriction in that stops your test running in uh, CI Debian net. You just invent a restriction. Um, if you're going to do that, you could ask on the list. You could, you could preemptively define a new restriction that means these tests are rather have poor coverage and therefore shouldn't you know, bad, badness is, is definitely bad, but goodness is not very necessarily very good. And then if you agree on the name of that or just decide for yourself, have a small conversation on the, alter, on the CI list, um, and then you can define that restriction and, f and until, that's, until the required feature is implemented, your tests wouldn't run. That, that would not be brilliant, but it might be an improvement. Well, I, I did this test precisely because I want them to be run when my build depths or dependencies change. And so, and having them disabled on CI Debian net, yeah, I would, I prefer the current behavior to disabling the test. But right. I guess it's a per package, per maintainer decision to make in the current state of things. Right, right. I can see that this is a, a needed feature. There are some comments on IRC. I read it out. It's from Elbrus. Um, triple tests can also skippable plus always exit 7.7. Seven. Uh, Tercio says, if I recall correctly, there was a discussion to mark some tests as trivial so they don't speed testing migration? Question mark. Elbrus, there is a bug uh, open about trivial tests. And Tercio says the bug number is 9049799. Should I repeat the, the bug number? 904979. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, I, want, I wanted to share one um, thing that happened to me. Um, so, um, I had a problem that, the, the, so the, the way the tests are triggered based on your, your dependencies um, is, is based just on the test dependencies and the dependencies of your packages. So all of those direct dependencies will, be, will trigger tests. Um, but some of my most important dependencies are indirect dependencies, um, and I didn't want to add direct dependencies because of this situation where they might be um, there might be alternative versions and I didn't want to restrict what version the test ran with. Um, so uh, in, in the absence of a way to explicitly request additional test triggers in a, in a sensible way, um, I discovered that the test triggers field in um, the, that is generated by um, duplicate source when you, when you build a source package um, out of the dependencies of all of your tests. Um, and if you add a new test, and of course, duplicate source doesn't know anything about really restrictions, so if you add a new test that has a 
dummy restriction, meaning this is just here to modify the dependencies, um, then its dependencies get included in your test suite triggers line. Um, and they don't, and because the test has this restriction, um, it's never run anywhere and it costs, costs no additional resources. And this is a bit of a bodge, but I, um, uh, the mailing list seemed to agree that this was probably the least bad bodge for the situation as it is. Um, so I've, I, I think maybe the, the patch to merge this new um, only for uh, dependencies restriction has been merged, maybe not, but um, that's definitely a technique. So if you have additional dependencies that are indirect that you want to trigger your tests on, you can, do, you can add this new, just add a special test um, which has all those things as, all those dependencies as test dependencies and then a restriction saying don't actually run it. Uh, maybe it's a RTFM question, but can you add, uh, let's say, triggers on source packages this way? Uh, no, I... SRC Linux. Random example. <laughs> Um, no, I don't think so. That's an interesting question. Uh, you could try adding a dependency on Linux image AMD64, though, which is always updated, I think. Mm, yeah, often enough. Anyone got anything else? Are there restrictions on who can ask uh, failed tests to restart? Uh, not really. Um, at least um, there's a, oh, I think you may need your uh, Debian SSO um, to get an API key. Okay. I, I've seen significant friction in Ubuntu from the auto package tests because tests are flaky and somebody who has an interest in a package may not have upload authority to trigger a rebuild and to trigger retests and uploading new ones to do it is kind of a pain. And you know, there's a happy retest button right there, but they've overly restricted it in my opinion. Right, I... I wanted to make sure that Debian didn't make the same mistake. I have not seen any complaints from anybody who wanted to do a retest and was not able to, was not able to either push the button themselves or find somebody to push that button. Um, I guess if that starts to be a problem, we might have to think about that. Another comment from IRC from Elbrus. Ian forgot to file a patch for his botch, so he's not so not merged. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, that, that means I have a to-do list item. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Another question for myself. Um, I've heard there is a, a hook for people to run the auto uh, I haven't checked yet. Uh, is it true and should be a bit more visible? Because I think it's, it's a good idea to, if you build the package to run the auto in this change route. Somebody gave me the mic as if I know the answer to this question. I don't use pbuilder. Why would I use pbuilder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever builder you, you are using. Um, uh, I don't think sbuild has such a hook. <laughs> um, I, I think that would be really annoying to me. Um, many of my tests are very time consuming. Um, also, in the package I have that has the most, the best tests, um, I have a way to run the tests on the, um, you know, or out of my Git tree directly without needing auto package test, this is a really good thing, do this. It makes your life a lot easier because um, you end up occasionally debugging in auto package test formally sort of weird auto package test problems about how the environment changes. But most of the time you can just run the script and it runs on your working tree and you can test, you can use the same test for dev testing as you do formally. Um, as for running it in, in pbuilder, I mean, is that not just a waste of time? Why would you run that on your laptop when we've got a perfectly good server out there in the cloud, which is much faster, we'll do all the stuff, and you know, we're not now into the stage of uploading stuff to the archive 
crap to the archive and letting it maybe migrate to testing with bugs in because well, you get a migration delay, you've got, you know, you can send it to, to ci.debian.net and ci.debian.net will run the test for you. Well, I would prefer to run it uh, my, uh, my NP builder because I will not up F will notice immediately if the, the test is, is broken and will not upload a, a buggy package. Your test must be much faster than mine if you say well, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have tests which are fast, others are not. So, but it's a, uh, if it's a hook, you can disable it. Uh, I don't know. Have you read the manual? I should. I just heard it. Okay. <laughs> Has build has has build has support to run notification tests. Great, great. Okay, so the answer is switch to S build and it has it, <laughs> because because we have someone here who will read the S build manual. <laughs> that that's kind of confusing, right? Because you you run this is. This is very amusing, right? So you run S build, and S build runs auto package test, and then auto package test probably runs S build. Uh, probably just runs S cheroot, doesn't it? It does the build again, though. You are now having S build does the source package build to binary twice. Great. So um, on IRC, um, Tercio and Elbrus confirmed that both have the option P builder and S builder. You just need to check the examples. I, I need to take to you, not you. <laughs> I, I, I guess that's that's the advantage of an informal boff. We can we can ask staffed questions. Anybody more want to ask RTFM questions? <laughs> no, no, but it's 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 much faster. You're only wasting the time of like ten people for like thirty seconds. That's totally fine. <laughs> Well, I have sometimes the problem that, uh, that auto discovery discovers a test in my Python package, which for some reason doesn't run. And uh, can I switch that off? The auto 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 test thing, auto dev test, I think that's called. Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a way to switch that off. I think if you just provide your own Debian tests control, um, then what the, should I put there? Uh, well, all would, uh, the working uh, tests. That's not al always so trivial. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you don't know which tests work and which don't, then that's, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how the computer would know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so sometimes they're, they're just broken somehow. Uh, what, all the tests or just a few? The tests. Well, they're, they're meant to run somewhere on the author's computer with, with some environment which we don't have, and I just don't want to run them. You don't want to run any tests at all? No. Uh, I think you... Especially, I, well, there are trivial packages and... I don't know what happens if you provide an empty Debian test control. Maybe, maybe IRC knows. Um, I don't know. That would be a thing I would try. If that didn't work, I would provide a test control with one test with a restriction that says this is not a test. And then I think auto... I think auto... The auto test generator thing does not... Okay. Does, if, if you have an explicit set of tests, it won't generate its own. I re remember a thread on the list about somebody who wanted to add a test in addition to the automatically generated ones, and that requires some kind of, that requires some kind of complexity where you merge the two things together. So comment from IRC. CI.debian.net has a wide list of Python packages that are supposed to work with the automatically generated tests. Elbrus Britney doesn't use that. Tersfield, that's right. Elbrus, so not used for migration. Elbrus, let us know uh, we want to white list to be we want the light white list to be empty. Uh I don't think I understand that. Me neither. <laughs> Please don't add the empty thing, says Elbrus. Okay, so my suggestion is, is wrong. Uh, so I don't know why you would want the whitelist to be empty. That seems backwards. Maybe that's a whitelist of 
maybe the whitelist should become empty by, by having all of those packages declare the tests explicitly? Well, hopefully IRC will answer this question. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> it's not so fast in typing. <laughs> oh, he's sleeping in, in, in Europe, he's sleeping. It's a, it's a very bad time of day yeah. at the moment. I think the answer is you'll have to ask on the list. Whitelist is unsupportable. This is answer. Uh, right, that's that's great. We we we. I mean, I'm I'm. Right. So Tokerio says the whitelist should be empty because every package should declare their tests. Right. So you should declare your tests, but if you have, but if there if there are no tests, but if there are no tests, well, right. If I don't have a test, I can't declare, declare right. a test. So, so we're just told don't add the empty thing, but, but how do you declare that your package has no tests if the auto thing is adding tests? Well, usually I would think then the, the auto tests the, uh, shouldn't directly go there, but shouldn't, if they succeed, that lead to a visualist bug, which means please add this test. In principle, you even can generate then the, the control file for the test. Uh, yes. Um, we're, we're told that this, the people who are answering this question have a delay in their live stream, so maybe we will wait. <laughs> <laughs> right? Elbra says, yes, declare your tests by creating a tests control or a Debian tests control dot auto depate. I don't know what a control dot auto depate is. Um. I'm, I'm not really sure what it is, but I learned if you have um, from the language, uh, for instance, in R, you have auto test R something, um, it's automatically done. And if uh, if you have an additional test control file, Lintian says you have uh, once you have this auto test for the language, and then you can add this auto dep eight test. It's more specific uh, than, uh, for instance, R just loads the module and. If this works, the test is pass, passing. And then you can add some additional tests which do more intense testing. At least this is my understanding of this. Does anyone, so we, this, this, Elbrus is explaining this whitelist to us on IRC. I'm not sure. Ah, Tecario says, if the package is being run but shouldn't, it's because it was incorrectly added to the whitelist, you can ask it to be removed. Right, this makes sense now, right? As, as I understand it, this automatically generated tests are only run for your package if they're on this yeah. whitelist, which is maintained in the infrastructure, which they want to be empty because everybody should declare their tests. So certainly don't add a thing to override the whitelist because that's silly. <laughs> <Because> okay. <laughs> that okay, makes sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think we're there now. <laughs> so I asked earlier is if anybody from the Salsa CI team is here? No, apparently not. But is anybody of you using? Salsa to run out the package test on every commit to do. No. So I want to do this. My 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 own thing is has. So the dget package has all these tests, which I want, which I run on my laptop on every commit. I mean, it's very tiresome. Uh, where's my battery out? Um, and I'm told that the GitLab CI, if I can do the right metadata and the right little script or something, that this is possible. Um, and I spoke to someone in a bar, I think, <laughs> um, who told me, oh yeah, that's totally possible. We should, we, should, we should have an example for how to do that. 
Okay, uh, because I'm doing it now. During this talk, I read how to do it, and I started now. So, okay, can you when you when you when you're done and you know what you're doing, can you post the probably the Debian CI list is a good place to post, um, saying, just like point us to the things you did and how it how it works. Uh, I'm gonna make a merge request to improve the documentation on the Debian CI team, and then gonna post the link to that merge request. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah. Just follow up question to that. Is that uh well the same as auto package test or is that independent of that? I think it's independent, isn't it? Well uh so, if you have your tests in kind of auto package testy way, then quite likely they will run relatively well in this infrastructure, either via um, auto package test with the null vert server, which just runs it here, um, or possibly there is a way to you know run it directly. Um, so often. Often, in fact, what an auto package test script is doing is, is running some existing test case in the package, and you just need to hit on the head the thing in the auto package test that makes it use the installed version to make it use the, the entry version instead, and then you have a test that can be in a nice format that you can iterate over. Maybe, um, I, well, when I upload something to Salsa, then it's in the source format only. And before I can run any well, auto package test, I in principle need to build that one. But during the build time, I already, in principle, usually have the same tests uh, just on the, on the build image. So it would make more sense to have something on Salsa which builds the package when I commit something instead of uh, while running some specific tests. Uh, yes, maybe. I think that depends on your package. Uh, my package doesn't need to build to run the tests, but obviously if your package has, well, uh, it seems to be about 50-50 whether a package needs, whether because there's a needs build thing you can declare to say whether you need that, um, and uh, many packages, script packages often don't need to declare that, um, and if you have compiled code, usually you do. Uh, whether Plumbing in your auto PGT tests into Salsa is the best way of getting testing on Salsa, I think, will depend. Um, one of the advantages of the documentation patch we're about to get, that's great, um, is that that will give you, because you know how auto package test works already, probably, and at least that's like a standard thing and not package specific, if we have documentation that says how to wire your auto PGT tests into your GitLab CI, then you can infer from that how to add all sorts of other tests because it's not going to have kind of too much package specific stuff in it. So I think this, this will be a good documentation example even if, um, even if not necessarily the way you would want to do it for your package. You can just throw away the part that runs auto package test and replace it with other thing. There are some more com uh, comments in uh, Wiki. Uh, Otto, are you using um are you reading the IRC list? Who? Also, are you reading uh, uh, IRC? Because, uh, uh, okay, there, there's a hint for you. Uh, you should add uh, um, the wiki in copy, and uh, the, wiki, the wiki is linked to copy for your um, test. I don't know if it's answering your question. I, I, I'm not really sure if I understand as well. Right. Wiki channel. Uh, IRC channel. This IRC channel is depconf18 minus z. But um, maybe you write simply an email and, and ask for clarification. And Elbrus also said, try to avoid needs build and try to only build the tests. I don't know in answering what. Uh, I think that was just in, 
I, I think Elbrus was just prompted to say that by the discussion that needs builders usually needed. Um, I, I think Elbrus's concern is that depending on the package, actually building it may be very time consuming and waste the CI's time. So you should only do that if needed. So uh, they're concerned in particular, they've added the link to the auto package test best practices wiki page uh, to the Gobi document. Um, I'll paste that into IRC as well. Um, and yes, uh, if anybody has best practices and stuff that doesn't necessarily fit in the docs, uh, or maybe even if it does, then, then add it to that wiki page. Anyone else? I, I could raise something if you would like. I'm sorry, I missed the start of the session, so please tell me if this was already discussed. Um, I mean, um, so for context, I'm maintaining this auto package test stuff in Ubuntu, and we run it a bit differently to how we run it in Debian. So in Ubuntu, we, um, um, we're blocking on regressions instead of Debian where you're, you're adding a delay to testing migration. We're actually permanently blocking until regressions are fixed or overridden by the release team. Um, but the problem that we have there is that we um, don't really manage in a lot of cases to pin the regression on the actual change in the archive that made the regression take place. So we manage, we, we run the test for the package itself when it's uploaded and test for anything which could, could break it. So like the, the dependency change tests, right? So anything that depends on you, you could break them. So we run your, the, your tests when you upload the package. So libraries, their consumers are tested when they upgrade them, but this means that you only catch first level dependency breaks when they're, when, when they're introduced, but we miss second level dependency, dependency change test breaks, and we miss base system dependency test breaks, we miss recommend dependency test breaks, that kind of thing, right? I don't know if you guys are seeing the same kind of thing in Debian, or if anyone has any clever ideas about how we can, how we can um, improve this situation, because it's quite painful for us and in fact, we've ended up training our developers to try to, instead of fixing a test, trying to instead say that a particular regression is in fact misidentified and therefore test regression should be skipped and ignored, which means that you end up kicking the can down the road forever because we didn't identify the regression, it slipped into the release, so now nobody is on the hook to fix this regression, right? So. This is, this is a problem of attribution of, of the regression to the right place, and, we, and we're not in the correct place there. And I guess the same problem exists in Debian, so I'm wondering if anyone has any thoughts there. Uh, so in Debian, because we only have this, you know, it's just adding a bit of delay, um, and I, I think we have this problem in a, much less severely. Um, uh, so The problem still exists in theory, though, right? The, yeah, the problem still exists in theory. Uh, there's a comment on IRC about this. Um, Elbra says the intent is that it's going to go to blocking. Um, that's not where we are right now, but that, that's definitely the intent. But right now, we don't we don't have right, this you, problem. You still don't have the problem. Of, you have the problem where you don't attrib if you impose a testing migration delay, you don't necessarily impose that on the person that caused the break. Right? Indeed, indeed, absolutely. Uh, that is true. In my day job, um, I also maintain a CI system. And some of the same principles apply there. Um, so one of the things that the Zen Project CI sometimes does is to retest the supposedly good baseline. Um, and that can help you discover that a thing is, if the thing is in fact a regression, that it's not a regression in the thing you thought it was, because now you retest, yeah. now you retest the supposedly broken thing with the supposedly good thing, and now it now it it's brokening. Now it's brokening. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, I I did think about this. Um, in principle, what you could do would be to take the whole testing migration thing and do it quite differently, and you could take whole batches of packages, like a whole night's update, and if it fails, you test all of the tests of all of the packages, even the ones you're not updating, um, and then when it fails, you could start bisecting 
the, the, the upload batch. Um, and the result of that with our current, I think with our current infrastructure and probably with your current infrastructure as well, this would mean you'd be able to do like one migration of some packages a week because you'd, you'd find some set <laughs> that would pass. Um, yeah. uh, you could maybe prefix that with the, the normal kind of more ad hoc approach that both of us currently have. Um, and that might mean that usually the full test run would pass, and then, um, then, then if a regression did pass through the first stage and cause massive delays in the second stage, you'd at least, you, you, you'd eventually know who to blame and what test ought to be souped up so right. that it didn't happen again. Um, I think that would be the only theoretically sound way to solve this problem. It, it would require a massive amount of compute power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you could do that by running only tests that have like reasonable run times or um, something like that um, to cut that down. And that might still allow you to spot more of these. Well, it would maybe be uh, good to have that option in auto package test directly because often I have the case that I get a failure and I don't, I, it's not in the primary dependencies and I, it's then hard for me to find out what else could have been changed to get a test. And for that, um, automatically bisecting would be great locally. Uh, yes, um, so that's a really good suggestion. So we already have ci.debian.net publishes what are alleged to be the set of packages installed when the dependency ran. But I was told, uh, I think on IRC, when I was discussing something, trying to debug some test, that this was not necessarily accurate. My if understanding it, of that list that you see there is that it's the list of the packages in the base image that were installed and not the things that your test installed on top of that. Right. Uh, uh, so if we made... Are we running out of time? Are we... Ten minutes? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we should be starting to wrap up, but um, I think... Or, uh, I think what that would be would be a feature in auto package test to print out the list of packages installed at the end of the test, maybe. Um, and then you would be able to diff that, and you could probably have some kind of robot that would somehow bisect that, a wrapper around auto package test. Uh, that would be cool. Um, uh, I think it's a smop. A diffish thing would be quite nice, though. So. Because then you could you could use that for some kind of bisection purposes, I suppose. Right. The problem sometimes happens is that it's been a very long time since the two test runs have happened, and the regression has happened somewhere in the middle of that, and the intermediate states are not all co-installable, and right. And so needing to reconstruct so the archive the, the, state at any point in time. So that's <laughs> yeah more stuff that's you, that, that's interesting from work. So at work we have a um, a cross tree bisector that can bisect changes that occurred in multiple different trees, multiple different VCSs. I think what you need to do in order to get this to work is you take the first package set and the second package set, and then you try to break it down into, you have some, you'd have to have some kind of algorithm that would turn that into a, a set of, into a graph of possible updates. Ideally a line, but some other kind of graph would be okay. Um, where each individual update is as small as possible. Um, I think we have tools that might be able to do that. I can't think of exactly what the algorithm would look like, but I don't think it's, it's probably that awful. You pick unupdated packages one at a time, install the, you know, you just have some kind of um, opposite of greedy algorithm. Um, one, uh, look at IRC, I'm told. Um, Uh, Elber, why don't you read? Yeah. <laughs> Elbrus said, uh, we run tests every week. 
this was his comment. I don't know. If you don't know what it means, don't repeat it. <laughs> um, I mean, the question is if you can construct that graph. Then you could run, you could, you could like could make a little stunt git branch out of it and run git bisect even if I'm you're feeling. something differently. If you could construct it after the fact, maybe you could construct it in time as well. Right, that would, mean, be, that would be good, but you wouldn't know which, the thing is you wouldn't know which test, right, the problem is the regression has already gone in the archive. Right, but I mean you could use this procedure to catch the regressions as they occur, so it's, this probably ends up being, I haven't thought about it very much, but it probably ends up being up, run the entire dependency tree, reverse dependency tree for the whole package for every upload, which maybe becomes a computationally infeasible task. Right, but one thing you could do, um, and a, a thing that we do uh, in Zen, is we automatically, all regressions are automatically bisected. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that automatic bisection doesn't produce a conclusive answer, in which case it goes to some list that nobody reads. Um, and if it produces a conclusive answer, then it produces a mail to list that everybody reads, with a, like a thing from the bisector saying, this commit here, you bad people. Um, and you could, you could do exactly this right. automatic bisection procedure every time you detect a regression. And then at the very least, when you, when you had one of these regressions slipped into the release, you'd find out after maybe a few days when the bisector has finally managed to, to pin it down, which package it was, and you would also discover that the update you were blocking was fine and you could let that in. And so nobody would have to be bothered with it. And then what, in policy terms, what do you think the action to take on the introducer of the regression that you found is? Just filing an RC bug on their package or something? Or? Uh, in Debian, I think uh, you would do the same thing to their package that you would for a normal auto package test failure, which I think we haven't really quite agreed, but I think a temporary RC bug to... Do that thing until they fix the bug, I guess. Yeah, um, and the other thing is you can take that as a as a queue to improve the test so that the next time a similar regression occurs, it will be caught before it goes in. That's normally possible. Like, for example, to add, uh, add the relevant dependency as a, as a needs, as a test restriction, sorry, as a, as a test dependency test somewhere. Yeah. I think we're getting quite close to out of time. Um, Normally, I think we're supposed to finish two minutes yes, ago. Two, no, two minutes from now. Yeah, I think the street, we're told on IRC the street stream is cut off, so. Isn't it? It's not meant to be? No, maybe I'm, maybe it's just like one of the people watching. Um, so, unless anybody has any final thoughts. Okay, well, thank you all very much for coming. Um, I hope we've captured most of this in the Gobby notes. Um, we'll probably post those to the Debian CI list. I think it's probably the right thing to do. Um, and uh, I'm happy to talk to launchpad people outside, I think, would probably be helpful. Thanks, everyone.